So you finished paper one last week. Whether you felt it went really well or really badly, here's what we can now figure out about paper two and paper three. I know a lot of you said for the Edexcel higher tier paper that it felt completely different, the structure was way off, there was only actually 17 questions and a lot of them were five markers. So for our predictions, we were kind of 50-50, I'd say. Here are some of the topics that did come up that have come up most years. And I know a lot of those were actually harder than some of the previous ones anyway. Saying that, there was also then the other 50% that I thought would come up and hasn't, that I therefore think is obviously now going to be coming up in the next paper. So here are some of the topics that didn't come up that I think will definitely therefore be in either paper two or paper three. We didn't see anything on basic, just trigonometry, Sokotoa, Pythagoras' theorem. One really surprising one for me was we didn't see any cumulative frequency, and I think that would definitely be in paper two or paper three. Nothing on simultaneous equations. Circle theorems is obviously gonna be coming up at some point. We didn't see any vectors, indices, and speed distance time didn't come up either. So these are some topics that I think we will definitely be seeing in the next two exams. Now I do have another list of topics which I think are the most common ones to come up in the calculator papers just generally. So without even seeing paper one and what happened there, this is now everything else that I think will also come up. It's obviously a lot of stuff. We've got two more papers to go through and it was even hard to narrow it down to this. The paper two, paper three are a little bit random. It could pretty much be anything, but if I were to summarize it or at least try to summarize it, then this is my list. So feel free to take a screenshot, save this, just double check that you do know how to answer all of these questions and then the ones on the page before as well. Some key topics to note are, I would say error intervals, really short questions, really easy to get the marks. Compound interest comes up a lot, but also consider that it could be not in the context of interest as in increasing, it could also be depreciation or something that's decreasing as well. So maybe a tap that's leaking, maybe a car that's losing value over some time period of years or months. That's also to do with compounding. Iteration is obviously a really key one for calculator papers because there's always loads of decimals. And the same with upper and lower bounds, particularly when they ask us to do calculations and use multiple different bounds with multiple different decimal places. Obviously, with it goes without saying, sine rule, cosine rule, trigonometric area of a triangle, those are likely to appear at some point. I wouldn't necessarily say completing the square is a calculator paper specific topic, but seeing as we didn't see it in paper one, I'm gonna assume it's gonna come up at some point in paper two or three. And expanding triple brackets is just a really easy one to make sure we know how to do. So what is my advice for the next two papers? First of all, just practice as many past papers as you can. Make sure you are doing paper two and paper three, because as I said, the topics aren't really shared out in a very obvious way. Whatever came up last year in paper two could come up this year in paper three. We just don't know. So do practice both the calculator papers. Make sure you also allot yourself some time to go through with the mark scheme in front of you and mark your work as well, just so that you can see exactly where you did get marks, where you might have lost marks. And also then you can identify if there's maybe two or three, four or five topics that you feel like come up consistently and you always get them wrong. Those are the ones I would say maybe have a look at revising. I wouldn't stress about trying to learn the whole syllabus now. It's such a big syllabus, isn't it? It's five years worth. So just do the past papers and then give yourself a bit of self-analysis, self-evaluation. Okay, is there something that I always do mess up on? Maybe I could see if I could fix that. Whilst you're practicing those past papers, I would recommend my best tip is to practice. For those questions where you have no idea or you don't really know, don't leave them blank. Practice just writing anything. Just have a look at the question. Go, what is the topic? Maybe it's something to do with area. Maybe it's something to do with ratios. Just think, what do I know more widely about this topic? Is there a relevant formula that I could just jot down and maybe sub in some values and see what happens? Is there something that I know about ratio? I could just share out a ratio and hope for the best. Even if you think it's wrong or you don't know where it's going to lead you, even if you're thinking, I, I'm never going to get the answer, I, li like, I literally don't care. I would rather you just wrote the most stupid thing down. I'd rather you wrote something not even relevant. As long as you're practicing, kind of just like a brain dump. If you don't know what to do, just write anything and everything. As long as you don't contradict yourself, you could still get some method marks in there. And you might not have even realized that what you wrote was even helpful. But it's all worth the extra marks, isn't it? Everything. The examiner is not there looking at it, judging you, going, oh, that was stupid. Why did they write that? They don't care. They don't know who you are. They don't know your name. They can't see who you are. They don't care. They're just going to see, have they written what's on my mark scheme? Yes or no. And if you happen to have written one or two things from that mark scheme, even if you didn't even get an answer at the end, then that's an extra two marks for that one question. It's so easy to pick up method marks as long as you write something. So practice the concept of just try not to leave anything blank. That's my best advice. Try not to leave anything blank. Even if you have no idea, even if you think you're writing something that's completely wrong, I don't care. Just write something down. It's definitely worth it. On my channel, we will be going through the Edexcel higher tier papers as lives, so you can come and join us and put your comments, questions in the chat. 
That will be every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at seven o'clock. These lives will also be posted just automatically to my channel afterwards, so you can also have a look at them when it suits you. I would also recommend making sure that you are using your scientific calculator. Don't be doing the Prowse papers or any revision with your phone because you won't have your phone calculator in the exam. Make sure you know exactly how your specific calculator works. Where is pi? How do I do fractions? How do I do decimals, percentages? everything like that, brackets, all of that kind of thing. On Friday this week, I will be uploading a calculator tricks video, so that might be helpful. There's actually a lot of stuff on that calculator that can help you that you might not have realized. If you haven't already got a scientific calculator, I would assume you do for science, but if you don't, please make sure you try and get one. If you can buy one, I have got a link in my description, which is from Amazon. You can find it there. I'm sure they might sell them cheaper at your school. If you can even get a second hand one from a, an older sibling, an older cousin, an older friend, something like that, that would also be fine. And finally, over the next few weeks, I will be posting videos that are tailored a little bit more towards obviously paper two, paper three, specifically at Excel. So the most common topics that I think you should revise, the most repeated questions from Edexcel, if there are any that do come up a lot. Some of the hardest Edexcel questions, if you're looking to get those grade eights and grade nines and you wanna see the hardest possible ones. And obviously I will be trying to write my own predictive papers as best as I can, obviously based on paper one, we don't know what they're gonna be doing this year, but we can at least try and guess. So as I said, if you feel like paper one did not go to plan or it wasn't what you wanted, please don't stress about it, please don't be upset. You still have two whole papers to go. There's still loads of marks out there for grabs and your papers are only graded as a total of all three, not individually. So as long as you can add up all of those marks together, then I'm sure you'll come out with the grade that you were looking for.